Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we take this $15 Chucky glider and make it radio controlled. Hello and yes, today's video is going to be slightly different. I have my son with me here today. Hello. And he is absolutely mad keen on... Planes. Yes, that's it. He is absolutely bonkers on anything flying. So uh, it is Easter holidays today and we are going to build a RC glider. It's got hundreds of little planes um, and, and, and we make um, like balsa wood ones. He's got cardboard ones. We've got absolutely everything. He is absolutely plain bonkers. But I really wanted to build him something that was really nice and easy to fly. Um, and, and that he could go throw in the park himself and, and not have any issues. Um, very simple, two channel, um, nice and lightweight and uh, yeah, hopefully fun to fly. What I did find at the local hobby shop is this particular one. Um, and it is a lot larger. Um, it's about a meter span. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna have a go at converting this to RC. So taking a quick look over the plane, um, you also obviously need to get radio gear in there. Finn, can you just take off the canopy there? Um, the canopy um, is is uh, weighted, so that is um, that can be removed. Um, we then obviously need to make a compartment in the front here to put our radio gear. So what we've got to do, um, we need um, to get the uh, the controls down to the rear from our servos up front. Um, to do that, we're gonna use these um, small push rods. Now I have done projects like this before and trying to get these push rods down to the back can be a bit tricky. Um, so I think the easiest and cleanest way to do it is actually gonna be to split the fuselage in half, um, do all the work to the inside and then glue it back together. Okay, so the first step to cutting this in half uh, is going to be to try and make some sort of jig uh, to hold it level so that we cut straight down this joint line. Um, I just cut these um, strips of uh, MDF um, from scrap. Um, they're 30 mil high, which equates to the halfway line on the glider. Okay, so we have now got the glider in our jig. I have chopped up the rear of the fuselage so that the joint line is running parallel with our sort of stringers here. And then we are gonna pop our hot wire cutter in and drag it along the top and cut it in half. Okay, Finn, so remove that top and see if it's worked. There we go. So now we've got our fuselage in half, we can start making room for our radio gear. We have got, as I say, two servos to get in there, the battery and a receiver. Um, now, you don't need to obviously use these particular ones, but they are nice and small. Probably you could get away with smaller still. Um, and there are many brands um, out there. They don't need to be expensive. I do, I've sketched out on here roughly how much foam that we need to remove so we're going to do that and uh and then see see where we're at right so we have uh carefully cut away this portion here and i have it right here um i haven't done the battery part yet i will do that uh afterwards um so we know that that came out of there so now all we're going to do is replicate that on the other side so that is the two Sides now cut and with the fuselage when it gets glued back together that will all be good uh, so now I will just hollow out a small area for the battery to fit up front uh, <coughs> I have cut out the recess for the battery and that as you can see goes back together all nicely next we need to start thinking about I guess really how we're going to fit the servos in um, servos probably go towards the rear of our little hole here. Because we've removed such a large amount of the strength out of this front portion to give it some durability back of cutting a, a ply section to uh, probably come just behind the wings. It will have a nice big taper to it to spread the loads and uh, 
everything. Okay, so servo tray for the glider. Um, I've made a cardboard template for uh, the, the sort of um, dugout area that we've made. Um, and I am now going to transfer that over to this, which is a piece of light ply. Uh, it is just uh, two layers of ply sandwiched between a, um, a, a layer of balsa, I believe. Um, so just nice and light. Um, now, I was thinking of 3D printing something to go in here, um, but I thought I'd keep it old school and, and go with the, the wood method. I think it'll work just fine. The server tray has now got the servos installed. Um, you've probably noticed that these servos have not got any uh, screw tabs or fixings on them uh, because I cut them off to go on a helicopter uh, many, many years ago. Glued in, um, obviously the other side will get glued when the fuselage sides come together. Now it is time to start running some push rods. They need to be secured uh, and recessed into the uh, fuselage and then uh, exiting at the tail um, to control the rudder. Okay, well, after a bit of mucking about, trying to sort it out and get them uh, get them rooted, we have got two push rods in going to the back. This side will be for the elevator and the other side for the rudder. Um, yeah, uh, I, I uh, pushed a, a metal rod through there, heated it up and pulled it back um, just to open up the holes. I have also... Uh, just heated it up and uh, melted out a bit of a channel there for it to uh, sit in on the side so um, it all comes together and uh, will join back up nicely. So what's next? Uh, I need to decide what I'm going to do with the elevators and rudder. The rudder I want to make a bit bigger. Um, rudders can never be uh, big enough so um, I'm going to chop that off and extend it probably with a balsa wood rudder on there and to be honest I'll probably do something similar with the elevator although um, I don't really need to increase the size of that. Um, it looks yeah pretty pretty um, durable. Um, I've got to make a uh, some sort of control between the two sides of the elevator so that's going to be a little tricky but um, yeah that is what I need to do next. So, hey right moving on to the tailplane um, I have cut out the uh, down the lines of uh, where it was on on the, uh, the molding sort of thing um, I have now got the elevators all hinged, um, just using some nice clear uh, tape. That's the particular one that I'm using. Um, so that's that. I've then made up this just with um, some push rod. Um, essentially uh, just a sort of U-shape with some bits of tube uh, across it. And I will just show you how that is going to work. Okay, so that U-shaped piece of metal is inserted into the ends of the elevators. Uh, it runs across the top there, and then you can just see it in the bottoms of the elevators there. And that quite nicely links the two elevators together. So um, all we need to do is pop a horn on one side, connect it up to the... Uh, the push rod and we should have action. Okay, I have extended the rudder. Um, I used some of the scrap foam from the front where we cut it out. Um, so yeah, extended it a good amount. Um, and I have put a strip of balsa down the leading edge of that. Uh, where the hinges will go, I have dug out a couple of old uh, plastic hinges, rather retro, but they should still work fine. So I'm going to cut those into here where I have got this piece of plywood uh, to strengthen the fin. Um, so yes, yeah, chop those in and yeah, it should all work. Okay, so we have now got our rudder installed. The two hinges are inside and all is working. So now what is left is just to connect up the, uh, the push rods to some horns, which we will make. 
and um, then get everything stuck together. We have now connected our push rods up to the elevator. I just used a small bit of ABS plastic uh, just from a sheet, uh, cut, cut a sort of triangular shape out and popped a couple of holes in there and exactly the same for the rudder side. Glued them into the foam with a dab of super glue. And what do you know, you now have elevator. So we've got plenty of travel there. So hopefully it'll be nice and easy for my son to control. Okay, so last thing to do, I think, is uh, run a small strip of plywood over this front surface and down uh, probably somewhere to around here, uh, just to act as a bit of a reinforcement and to stop the nose crushing quite so much because I imagine this is going to take a few impacts. So, um, yep, I will trace around the foam, transfer it onto the plywood, and uh, yeah. So there we go. I have cut a small piece of ply just to sandwich in there, and I've actually recessed it a tiny bit, just trimmed out the foam, um, I have also done a bit of a dovetail in the back there just to relieve the stress, uh, stress line. So it just spreads the load just a little bit. Um, but yeah, it is time to get the fuselage glued back together and then canopy and perhaps adding a little extra dihedral, but we'll probably test it first. It is back all in one piece, which is great news. Um, battery is in there. I have installed, if I get it focused, uh, a couple of little magnets in the fuselage and on the canopy, um, just to hold that in place, which works great. Um, next up is gonna be balancing it and uh, underneath, they've kindly given us two points to balance from and that worked out when we were uh, testing it um, earlier with uh, just free flight. So we need to aim for that. However, bit of an issue uh, with the battery that I've got in there at the moment and the receiver, we are a fraction nose heavy, which is not something that you come up with very often. Um, so I've got to sort that out. So I've either got to move the battery back or use a slightly lighter battery, which I think will probably be the easiest solution. So there you go. I will get it balanced up and then we can go for a test. All right, here we go then, Finn. First flight, let's see how it goes. Finn, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Well done, Finn. That was an amazing flight. How, how did that feel? Good. Good. Yeah, I'd almost given up after our little attempt in the garden. But now, Perfect. it's going absolutely amazingly. Can't get enough. We haven't caught a thermal yet, but I don't think we're far off it. We'll good bung this time. See how far he can go. The last one, he nearly brought all the way back to us. But uh, we'll see what's this one. Oh, feeling a little change in wind direction. Hopefully it's not too bad. Here we go then, Finn. Off we go. Going well. Going well. Still going. Wowzers. Oh, sketchy landing. But good. But good. Look how far it went. It's all the way over there. Well done. A few little ideas going around my head. Perhaps we do a winch system where we could winch the glider up uh, and we could do that on a, uh, have the winch mounted to an RC car um, or some sort of, as I say, retrieval system where we have some sort of magnet on it and can go pick it up with a raging control car. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think I should do that? Anyway, a couple more test flights and then we're gonna go home and uh, make a trip to a proper hill.
and uh, as you um, have just uh, seen in the footage um, we've had it on a good variety of hills now and uh, and the glider really does hold its own um, we've had it on the flat uh, and uh, I've even managed to catch a couple of thermals with it um, and on the larger hills in what 10 to 15 uh, miles an hour it still seemed to manage uh, to, to hold its own quite happily fun little project to do over a weekend order yourself up a little glider find a couple of old servos kicking around and give one a go so please let me know what you thought in the comments I try and read and reply to every single one and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up hit the bell so you never miss an upload and most importantly subscribe to the channel thank you for watching I will see you in the next one